everyone is a hero in their own story. You've probably heard that before. What it means is that everyone, no matter how evil they might seem to others, tends to do what is right in their own mind. Now, why is this? Some people would say that humans are basically good, that we're born good and we try to do the right thing. It makes sense. A religious person might say that you are made in the image of God and God is good, therefore we are good. A non-religious person might say that we have an instinctual desire to help others because the way we've thrived as a species is by helping each other survive. So we do what we think is good, and while it's hard to argue against helping others with basic survival needs, my question for today addresses the more complex aspects of life. What is good, and based on our own limited and subjective understanding of good, should we help others? It's said that the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and what I believe that this means is that the outcome of our actions isn't always quite as helpful as we intended. How many times have you given advice to someone who followed through with it only to find out the situation had a rather poor outcome? Sure, you were trying to help, but in doing so you caused more of a problem. How many people enable harmful behaviors because they are trying to help? For example, a wife whose husband is too overweight to get out of bed and so she helps him by bringing him another plate of cookies. What about the parents who want to help their child get a high paying job and in doing so stifle their creative dreams? And that person grows up possibly more wealthy but overall less happy than they would have been pursuing those passions. Or perhaps religious groups who want to help the world by converting everyone to their religion. How many kids have been traumatized mentally and sometimes physically by being forced into these pray the gay away conversion camps, or even the more violent sects of religions who say worship our god or die and it's all under the premise of saving your soul? What about the groups of so-called freedom fighters who want to help the country and do so by violent means because they believe their cause is so justified? When we get involved and help other people, how do we know what we're doing is actually helpful? How do we know we aren't causing more bad than good? And who's to say that our ideas of bad and good are even correct? Every time you take a stand either for or against something, you are helping a cause. But how do you know that that cause is good and justified? For everything that you stand for, there is a force of people who stand for the opposite. How do you know that they aren't correct? Are you helping the wrong side? It's a puzzle, one that we can't solve, one that people have been asking since the beginning of people asking questions, and everything roots from it. Everything comes back to this idea of helping others. And even if you are absolutely sure that you are doing the right thing by who you choose to support, how do you know the ultimate effects of that? Everything is connected. Everything causes ripples that reach out and affect the lives of others. If you were a merchant and you wanted to help your customers by lowering your prices, you might find that in doing so, you are lowering the value of the products you sell. Everyone then comes to you for that product which puts other merchants out of business. So by helping your customers, you are hurting your peers. Eventually people might look at you as a bad person for driving out all the other merchants when all you were trying to do was help people. What about others who help people for selfish reasons? Does that make it any less good? If helping someone benefits them, does it matter why you do it? For example, the pragmatist who donates to charity because in doing so, it causes them to be in a lower tax bracket and have to spend less money overall. Is that money donated to charity somehow tainted? In a way, isn't helping others always selfish? Even if the only reason you are helping others is because it makes you feel good, aren't you still doing that for your own satisfaction? Does that make it any less good? Is donating $1 to charity just because it makes you feel good better than donating $100,000 for some kind of tax loophole? Isn't the larger amount of money of a much greater benefit to the people who receive it? So how much does intention matter? Is it better to help selfishly and end up with a good outcome for all parties, or to help selflessly and have a bad outcome for everyone? Of course, ideally you want to selflessly help people and have good outcomes, but we all know that it doesn't always work out that way. Perhaps the best thing to do is to take no action. If we don't help others, if we don't stand for anything, then we can't possibly be wrong. Though inaction in itself is an action. By not doing anything, we are potentially allowing bad things to happen. But if we act, then we could be the one causing those things. It reminds me of how I learned to treat my father. Now, my dad is very bipolar at times. 
he can have very violent mood swings, and sometimes once he's in a bad mood, it's just miserable to be around him. So as a kid, I was always trying to do anything I could to prevent putting him in a bad mood. Sometimes that was impossible. If we were driving somewhere and I told him the road to turn on, he would get mad at me for telling him how to drive, but if we were driving somewhere and he missed a turn, he would get mad at me for not telling him where to go. So it was a gamble to say something and to remain quiet. But at least if I remained quiet, I could deny any knowledge of where we needed to go. It was best to remain uninvolved. I think that it sort of set a precedent for my life. I see situations and don't say or do anything, because if I get involved, no matter which side of the argument I land on, I could be wrong or I could cause trouble just for trying to help. So I stand back and I observe people, I look over the situation, and I found that when I do that, people come to me for help. By not getting involved in a situation, it allows me to have a more rounded view on what's happening, and I feel I'm able to give more informed advice, if asked. And that leads me to the last thing I wanted to say. When should we help people? And I think it really comes down to this. Help people when they want it, not when you think they want it. Help them with what they want to do, not with what you think is good for them. Help them to better express themselves, instead of to be more like you. So it's time for input from my patrons. Koenig says, I want to say that people aren't helpless, that we are smart enough to know when something is beyond our means alone. We should be able to know when to say we need help. That doesn't sound so bad in a general sense, try to leave a light footprint, so to speak. But what do you do when someone is too proud or too shy? What about someone who's being abused and too scared or too young? I want to say that we should be able to stand back and be reactive when it comes to helping others, but then there are these massive gray areas. So should we forego trying to help when we might be needed in order to avoid potential disaster or embarrassment? I honestly can't give a good answer. This is a really good question and something I think about a lot as well. An example would be not too long ago I was going for a walk and when I was passing in front of someone's house I heard a child screaming from behind the house. Now my first thought is to go see what's wrong but that would mean trespassing into someone's yard and how embarrassing and weird would it be if the kid was just playing around. So I waited for a minute or so and sure enough the screaming was just that sort of scream laughing that kids do. But what if it hadn't been? What if while I was standing around, the kid was being attacked by a dog or got caught in a barbed wire fence or any number of things? This is something I think about every time I hear people screaming or yelling angrily. And I don't know what to do either. 99% of the time, nothing is wrong and people are just being silly. But if you could have saved someone's life, but you didn't because you were afraid of being embarrassed. The Dodian says, I can't even count the number of times I've just said that I agree with someone so that we don't have a disagreement or an argument over it. It always felt like I'm the one in the wrong when we get into these arguments too. I never know which side to support because either way someone's not going to be happy with what I choose. When it comes to helping others, I wonder if good intentions cut it at times or if it's just a way to say, well I tried. I think I know what you're getting at. Sometimes you can help others by disagreeing with them or pointing out a flaw in their argument, but doing so is going to make them mad. I know that feeling well. I've lost a number of friends over the years because I stood up to them about some kind of issue. When someone was being manipulative, I'd call them out on it. When they were being an asshole and I felt they were in the wrong about some kind of issue, I'd speak my mind. But I guess I realized that I don't even know if I'm helping them by doing that. I mean, it seems like the right thing to do to point out flaws in people's arguments to try to help them see the truth, but maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm losing friends for no reason. Furry Flesk says, What can be considered helping people is very subjective. Things that seem clear as right actions sometimes aren't. I remember in boot camp I was told a story of a man who was arrested in a foreign port for saving a woman and her child from a burning car because he interfered with Allah's will. That Allah wanted her to die in the fire. So while I would never say not to help people, I would say be prepared for any and all potential consequences because what may seem right to you, no matter how universal it may seem, may not align with someone else's definition of right. That seems a little bit extreme, but if it's a true story, it's actually a really good example of what I've been talking about. There have been cultures who sacrifice their children because they think it'd make the crops grow better or whatever, and we today see that as objectively bad, but those cultures didn't think that way. They thought it was helping, they thought it was doing the right thing. Rose says, should you help people? The answer is yes, you should help people. I would say kindness is the highest virtue there is, above strength, above courage, above industriousness. However, if changing another person is what you think you need to do to help them, then give up. You can't do it. It's misguided and you're only going to stir their shit. 
You can give advice, but if you have any notion that you can enforce a change in an adult, you're wrong. If you want to help someone, if that's really what you want from the bottom of your heart, then it's simple. Help them to survive, help them to smile, and if you believe their behavior to be unhealthy, then leave them with your advice in the most unoffensive packaging you can. If you do that, maybe they will consider what you've said. Then they themselves have decided to change. I agree on a few things here. It's impossible to change an adult. You can't teach them better behaviors like you would a child. By the time someone is 25, that's how they're going to be for the rest of their life, unless they have some kind of, as they say, life-changing experience. That might sound weird, especially to my younger viewers, but you really don't understand this until you've lived with someone else. They're going to have a lot of strange behaviors that seem wrong and bad and certainly not how you were raised, but you can't change them. Trying to fix them is just going to cause drama. They are how they are, and you just have to accept it. I can also agree with the second part here, basically talking about using tact when you address someone's issues. Now, I would say people deserve to live how they want, even if it's in a self-destructive way. So, in many cases, I wouldn't even bother giving advice to someone unless they came to me specifically and asked for it. And that's really the only time they're going to be receptive to your advice anyway. Well, thanks for your input. And to everyone else, thanks for watching. If you like my videos and want to see more, why not subscribe so you'll be alerted when I upload? Anyway, I'm Cothrix, and you have a wonderful day. Hey everyone, this is just a reminder that I do gameplay streams on Twitch at 9pm Eastern every weekday. And if you want to get a hold of me, the best way is through Twitter. Finally, I want to thank those of you who support me on Patreon and Twitch. You make all of this possible.